Coming up, it's time to stop listening to everything every athletic director or president or conference commissioner has to say when it comes to expansion. You are Locked On Big Ten, your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, you're listening to Locked On Big Ten. I'm your host, Nate Dickinson. Today's episode is brought to you in part by FanDuel Sportsbook. FanDuel Sportsbook is the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. Coming up on today's show, there's a whole lot going on in the basketball transfer portal already, with, of course, still a whole lot of basketball left to be played. And we're going to get into the biggest of Big Ten news. But I wanted to start off with some more rumors surrounding expansion and why I'm pretty much done listening to everything that every conference or school leader has to say. The latest news coming out comes from Arizona President Robert Robbins. He spoke to CBS's Dennis Dodd and basically said that when the Big Ten was looking for expansion the first time around, it had preferred Oregon over UCLA. Really, all that he was officially quoted as saying was that when he first heard about the expansion plans, it was going to be the Trojans and the Ducks of Oregon, not the Bruins of UCLA. First off, This is just something that doesn't really make a whole bunch of sense. If USC was going to go to the Big Ten, US your UCLA was always the obvious partner to go with them. And yes, maybe the Big Ten would have rather had Oregon when you look at the situation going on right now with UCLA. But if you were going to get USC, you were going to have to kind of take UCLA with it, even if you didn't want to. I'm sure the Big Ten is perfectly fine with the schools that it got. So whether or not this has merit or not, I feel like you need to start to dissect things a little bit more when we hear from these kind of commissioners and leaders for a couple of reasons. One, right now we're seeing just rumors, and this is not when things are actually happening. All the sorts of rumors and talks can be a good sign that something might be happening soon. But when it comes to like the actual big picture of things, everything that we've talked about lately is really all just rumors, whether it be this whether it be Oregon hiring the former Wisconsin provost who was big on expansion, whether it be the rumors that the Big Ten was targeting more Pac-12 schools that we talked about on a show not too long ago. All this stuff is stuff that's just rumors and isn't stuff that's actually happening. We need to keep a focus on that when we have these conversations. But the second thing that I want to get to is that maybe more importantly, we shouldn't be having these conversations because the people who are spreading these rumors are not here to tell us the truth. Let's face it, when it comes to the interests of, say, the athletic director at an Arizona, or the president in this case, at Arizona, Robert Robbins, or any of the Big Ten rumors that have come out, or anything else regarding expansion, what has it said? Apparently, Big Ten officials spoke to reporters and said that the Big Ten had been targeting more Pac-12 schools right in the middle of the pac 12 media deal. That was a time where I said on the show, hey, maybe let's take a little bit of a deeper look at this. Why would the Big Ten say that? Is it because it's true? Or is it because the Big Ten might want to have a little bit of an easier time getting some Pac-12 schools? I say you look at it the same way here. Well, what would Arizona want here? A current Pac-12 school and a president of a Pac-12 school that is trying to get its school the best media rights deal possible. Could it be that maybe the Big Ten wanted Oregon? Perhaps. I mean, I guess it makes sense on the surface level that you'd want the Ducks over UCLA. But at the same time, would it also not make sense if the president of Arizona just said this to potentially up the look of the Pac-12's media rights deal? Yeah, yeah, I understand Apple, Amazon, everybody else. Yes, the Big Ten got two of our biggest schools, but they didn't get the two that it wanted. We still got one of the big prizes in Oregon, so pay us some more money. Right now, at this current stage, where you have seasons coming to an end still, and nothing is really going to happen yet, but the wheels are going to start turning soon, that's when I think you get the most 
I wish shouldn't say propaganda, but I guess pro whatever it is your school wants kind of talking and all these little kind of leaks and things that may not entirely be the truth because they're not their job is not to tell us the truth. Their job is to keep their bosses happy. And when it comes to that, they will say whatever they want and leak whatever they want to the press at any single time. So what is it that this means? I don't know. But I think that it's fair to say at this point that with how crazy everything has been and how many rumors we've gotten throughout all of this expansion stuff, I think it's fair to say that when you hear something from a president, an athletic director, a conference commissioner, anyone who has any sort of power and weight in these kind of situations, they understand that their words weigh heavy as well. So all, whenever something this comes out, don't think about first whether it is true, but think about why it is that this person would say this at this time. Because while these people may be stupid in your eyes, you may not like the people who run your universities or your athletic departments and may think they need to go. Whether it's smart or not with the things they say, it is absolutely planned. None of this stuff gets out very often accidentally. So when someone actually just comes out and says something, even if it's just something that seems to be off the cuff in an interview, you better believe that, or at least assume, and go into your analysis thinking, okay, what was it that they were wanting to say? What is the goal of this? Because this is not a court of law we're talking about when these people are doing these interviews, not by a long shot. They can say whatever they want. So they're going to say whatever it is that interests them best or what it is that they're being told to say too. And again, that doesn't mean that you just don't trust every single thing that every person in a high position of power at a university says. But you, I think you just have to take that grain of salt into it every single time someone says something. And as far as expansion goes, if you ask me, it's now just a matter of finding the actual truth within all of the sure, propaganda that's going to be coming from both sides here. Because I could see the argument for, yeah, the Big Ten probably did want Oregon, but I can also see the argument of, well, this guy really is just trying to help out his own situation the best he can, which is really the goal of all of these people who are making these moves. Coming up here in just a minute, we're going to talk some more on Locked On Big Ten on some of the biggest names in the transfer portal, people leaving, one already with a new destination, and others that could be coming in. We'll talk about some of the biggest names to hit the portal already with still a couple of weeks left to go in the college basketball season. That's coming up right here on Locked On Big Ten. Before we get into any of that, though, Locked On Big Ten is officially sponsored as well as the rest of the Locked On Podcast Network by FanDuel Sportsbook. The tournament's heating up, and now it's the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 when they sign up. All you need to do is head on over to lock or fanduel.com slash locked on. Go to the site, make your first bet, and get up to $1,000 in bonus bets back when you miss on that first bet. So head on over to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. You can bet on anything you like, spreads, money lines, props, any of it. You can get over at FanDuel. If you hear a line here on the show or any locked on show, it's coming from fanduel.com. So play alongside of us, bet against us, whatever it is that you think of us, play at FanDuel and get that no sweat first bet for free at FanDuel.com slash locked on. Also, thank you for making Locked On Big Ten your first listen every day. Make sure you check out our brand new podcast, Locked On College Basketball. Everything you need to know about college basketball in one place. Plus hear from the big name experts, insiders, coaches, and players. Locked On College Basketball, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Now is a good time to tune into that one. Speaking of basketball, let's get into some of the big names that you need to know for the Big Ten in the transfer portal. It is just a couple of weeks out of the season ending for some of these schools. For all of these schools, it's at least a couple of weeks out. Some of them had their season end just days ago, but already Big Ten players are putting their names back into the portal to see where their next stops are going to be. 
A big name that we already know the destination for is Sky Clark. Decommitted, or I should say left the team in from Illinois after 13 games, started 12 of them, was a top 40 recruit going into this freshman season for him. So he is widely regarded as one of, if not the best get for anyone who wanted him in the transfer portal. He's announced he's headed to Louisville, a team that certainly had its struggles this season, but he's going to hopefully try and revamp that squad. Sky Clark, a guy who we saw limited playing time for Illinois. He was supposed to be one of the big pieces of this rebuild for the Illini after losing some pieces all around. And they needed some help from him. He was able to be there when he was there. But again, went from a starter to injured to leaving the team. And now he's headed to Louisville. One of the biggest gets of the offseason, no matter who it is who commits or decommits from schools, he was going to be one of the bigger gets of the year. Louisville ends up getting him to start off this transfer portal season. Also, Jamison Battles leaving for Minis- leaving Minnesota for greener pastures, he hopes at least. He was an all-Big Ten honorable mention last season, leader of this Minnesota team. Uh, Minnesota losing four guys already to the portal. It's been a tough rebuild for Ben Johnson and that Gopher team. Point is, though, he's, as well as Scott Clark, one of the most highly touted players out of this portal this year for a different reason. He's got a whole bunch of different experience, averaging 15 points per game nearly as a college player. He's going to be a guy who's going to be able to go anywhere and become a plug-and-play instant role player, if not starter, depending on how high he wants to go up the ladder, assuming he's going to go somewhere where he's going to play. I know Ohio State, Indiana, a whole bunch of other schools have already been in contact with Jamison Battle. Speaking of Ohio State and Indiana, they're both making official visits with Nick Timberlake as well. The other guy I wanted to talk to here in this transfer portal, because he is in the early, at least, round of transfers coming in. Maybe the most talked about name for those teams that really want to make a push and be really good next season. Because he is the guy who can shoot the rock. It is an easy thing to formulate. When you look at the transfer portal, there are teams who just need to do complete rebuilds. There are teams who are only just a couple of pieces away. But no matter where your team is, if you need a guy or even if you don't need a guy, you'll make room for a guy like Nick Timberlake. Shot 42% at Towson this season. A two-time all-conference player has already heard from Indiana, Ohio State, North Carolina. A whole lot of other schools are interested as well, of course, in his services. This is the prime transfer portal target, a guy who is going to be able to help any team he goes to, any team at all. If he wants to go to the top team in the country, be a starter, he can do that. If he wants to go to a team like an Indiana or an Ohio State, an Indiana team that's going to need a whole lot of pieces to get in this transfer portal if it wants to make up for the players that it is losing, it can go be a, he can go be a superstar on that kind of a team. It really is up to what ever he wants to do and he feels like is the best fit but this is the guy and the kind of guy who is going to have the most options here in this portal this season someone from a mid-major who just shoots the lights out of the gym and is going to again just be a plug and play at the very least someone you can just put in a corner and wait to get an open three that's the kind of player that's useful on any team in any stage And looking to get anywhere as far as postseason hopes go, he's going to have all sorts of options. And the Big Ten would be a great, great place for him to end up. He's someone who, of course, with the way that some Big Ten teams shot the ball this season, could make a big impact in making a whole lot of teams a whole lot better when it comes to next March. Because we saw shooting woes can definitely be a concern when you're trying to go deep in this tournament. And they've been a concern for Big Ten teams. This is just the very first layer of all of this, too. I want to make that very, very clear. We're going to have a whole lot more players getting into this portal, both coming to the Big Ten and leaving the Big Ten as well. So we're going to have to keep a tight eye on everything that happens in these first couple of weeks, especially, because I feel like things are going to start happening very quickly here, and we'll keep you in touch on everything that's going on in that portal. We'll end things today by taking a look at all the news from around the Big Ten. First, 
players of the week. We got a whole bunch of them, so I'm just going to go quickly through the list. In women's tennis, it's Ohio State's Isabel Bulais. In men's track, Minnesota's Michael Buchanan. And in women's track, it's Iowa's Leah Love. Men's field athlete of the week, Penn State's Tyler Merkley. And women's field athlete of the week is Iowa's Kat Moody. In men's tennis, Ohio State's JJ Tracy takes off or takes athlete of the week. In men's golf, Illinois's Mathis Bessard is your athlete of the week. And in women's golf, Ohio State's Kaylee McGinty is the athlete of the week. Big, big recruiting news to get to here. In football, Michigan snagged a big get from the state of Ohio and a player who had an Ohio State offer. Choosing the Wolverines instead. His name is Jordan Marshall. This was someone who made headlines with his commitment. It was on the college front page at ESPN for a little while when it first happened. All sorts of publications with both Ohio State and Michigan talking about how big of a get this guy is. A four-star recruit. And again, not the highest of highest gets that Michigan will be able to have. But as far as what it means for the turf wars, it was huge, huge. And it got people talking. Jordan Marshall choosing Ann Arbor over Columbus. And it could be, again, just a sign of the tide shifting here. Michigan getting the wins. Now, could we be seeing Michigan being able to recruit better in Ohio? The way that Ohio State has been able to recruit well in Michigan. Do those tides start to turn? I think it's the fact of what he represents, Jordan Marshall, a lot more than the actual story of his commitment what it means that he committed to Michigan over Ohio State is really what I think is going to have people talking about this commitment for a little bit longer. He's a really good player, four-star recruit, number nine player in the state of Ohio. But Michigan's gotten some guys out of the state of Ohio in the last couple of years. Like, for instance, the guys they've gotten aside from Marshall did not have Ohio State offers too. This is a guy who had a Buckeyes offer who was reportedly a big, big big-time target for Ohio State. He says, no, no, I'm going to go over to Michigan and play for the winners. That's that's the big deal here. Not that he really even chose Michigan, but the fact that he chose Michigan over Ohio State after Michigan has won this game twice in a row, that's something that can get a headline going. That'll just about do it for Locked On Big Ten here today. Thank you for making us your first listen. And for your second listen, check out Locked On College Basketball. Experts Isaac Shade and Andy Patton bring you everything you need to know on and off the court, plus hear from big-name experts, coaches, and players throughout the basketball landscape. Locked On College Basketball, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Next time on Locked On Big Ten, we've got NCAA tournament stuff to get into. Michigan State's still out there in the Big Ten, trying to represent in the second weekend. And we have the conversation. What's going on here? Is this conference just not fit to win in the Big Ten, or in the NCAA tournament? And maybe even more importantly, what's going on with Purdue? As they get another rough loss, is Purdue just a team that's not built to win in the NCAA tournament? We'll get into all that and more next time here on Locked On Big Ten. Until then, follow along wherever you get your podcasts on YouTube and on Twitter. Locked on Big Ten, one zero when you type it out at the end, not T-E-N. I'm Nate Dickinson at Nate with Sports with Locked On.